Pong is one of the earliest video games. How difficult it might be to recreate it in Godot? Let's take a look. We're gonna start as usual, creating a new scene, let's call it main. And adding a character body to the, this will be our pedal. We're gonna add more things there. As a graphical representation, we are going to utilize color rect. This is just a rectangle filled with predefined color. Being able to handle physics, we need to specify also collision shape 2D. The shape of respective pedal and the geometry is pretty trivial. We are going to set some constants to handle everything properly. The player should be able to move the pedal. For that, we need to attach a new script. The processing itself is very trivial. In the method physics process, we are going to handle key press and change the parameters necessary to move the pedal. You can see there is a vector movement, which specifies to which direction and how the pedal should move. The X value will be always zero because we want to move up and down. Main part here is move and collide method. As an argument, I'm using movement vector multiplied by the speed and the delta. The movement stands for direction. Speed means distance. And the delta makes these values respective to current frame rate. We are also clamping the Y position based on the screen size. You might ask why I'm not changing the position Y directly. In a Godot, or basically any time when you need to work with physics, it's usually better to specify forces and let the engine to compute the rest. The force being here the directional vector multiplied by the speed to give it some length. It will be way easier for you in the end because the engine will be able to handle collisions and the intersections of the sprites, for instance. We are going to do it soon. Let's make a copy of the pedal because we need two in the end. One for the player and the second for the opponent. You can notice in the script the variable is player. If it's true, we are going to be able to move the pedal. Now it's true for both of them, so I can control both of them. It's useful if you want to play against yourself. It's time to add the ball. Principle is the same, the pong is not that difficult. The ball will be square, let's say 20 times 20 pixels. Because we want it to be reactive and bouncing, we need physics, which means we need collision shapes to D. It will be rectangle as before, and we are going to set a few more things. For the ball, we need one more thing. We need to be able to recognize the situation when the player scored the point. In the game universe, when the ball left the screen. We can utilize visible on-screen notifier, which is an internal way of Goro, how to tell you that something like that happened. And when we are set, it's time to add a script again. It's 
In a ready method, which is sort of constructed but not really, it's being called every time where the element appears on a scene, I'm going to set its position using a method reset and I'm also setting a screen size variable according to current screen size. You can see I'm altering the Y value for the half size of the ball because the anchor, the leading point is in the middle of our object. Nothing's happening because we need to specify a method, some sort of update, the same as before for the pedals. And because we have our physics set properly, it's very easy. Physics process as before and move and collide method. And in the same manner as before, I have a direction vector, I have a speed and some delta to balance the difference in frame rate. As you can see, the method move and collide returns something. I'm saving this something to collision variable. Now I can ask what the variable contains. I know that if the collision happens, it is with pedal. I'm trying to figure out direction to which I should bounce the ball, for which I need to use normal. In this case, to my pedal in the point of impact. When I have this, I can use bounce method, which returns a vector for the ball to bounce. And to make it more difficult, I'm increasing speed a little. What we also need is to assure that the ball will be bounced with respect to screen size and for that we can simply ask what is the Y position of the ball and clamp it as before. And as an addition we are also inverting the current direction. It means that if ball is coming from up direction, it's going to be bounced back. Time to specify the main script of the game. The ball defines a signal. The signal is a way how two components in Goro can talk with each other. What I want to do is to connect the signal being emitted by a ball with onScore method here in the main. And if the parameter is player, player is going to have a point. If not, then opponent. Talking about score, we are going to add two labels for player to see. What should happen after score changes is to update the text, update the labels, and reset the ball. And it seems to be working, but wait, the score counter doesn't work. You know why? Well, we have our signal. We connected the signal to appropriate method, but there is nothing to emit it. And exactly for that, we have visible on-screen notifier. We are going to set everything properly and emit the signal based on the position of the ball. So if the X is negative, it means that the ball left the screen on the left side. Thus opponent should have a point. And the vice versa for the opposite side. And it is working. How cool is that? And there you have it. A basic pong game building Godot, complete with pedal movement, ball physics, and a simple scoring system. I hope you enjoyed, so thanks you for watching and see you next time.